on the, um, the, the charter revision proposal here in Troy, the, the tax cap charter revision proposal, uh, four years ago, which, by the way, passed in a Democrat sweep, which means that Democrats and Republicans supported tax um, constraints at the local government. So it's not a, it's not a, a conservative or a Republican-only thing. It's a common-sense thing. You know, there needs to be some limit to the expansion of government, you know, and elected officials, and even even people who proclaim to be conservatives and, and, and Republicans will approach government as something that's benevolent, and, and many times that it is, but they will also look at the taxpayers as kind of an endless supply, an open checkbook. And as Margaret Thatcher said, and it's one of the most beautiful um, phrases that she came up with, at some point you run out of other people's money. <laughs> Do we not find it strange that people are talking about changing rates? A rate means that you have decided as an electorate, as a population, that your government should be a certain size. And so when you start tinkering with rates, what you're saying is government is too small. We need to expand it. And so therefore, if you're going to make that claim, you should be able to get buy-in from the people that you are representing and at the very least get two-thirds of your legislative body to do it. And it's not a big, you know, again, if it's such a great thing, no problem. But I think the concern is that they know it's not such a great thing to always expand government and that they can't get that buy-in and that they're ashamed to show them their proposal to the public. And that's what it is. Proposal 5 is a very, very good proposal, if you ask me. And it's a shot across the bow that says, look, figure out how to do it, but stop asking us to expand the size of government. Yes? Since we're talking about proposals, would you uh, tell us how you feel about Proposal 6? I am not, and, and, that's gonna, and, and this is going to be one of those divisive things in this room, I think. I'm not a fan of Proposal 6, yeah. and the reason for that is I think there are a lot of unintended consequences there. Um, I don't have any objections to those that support it. It's, it's not an issue that I have a strong feeling on. For example, I feel strongly that Proposal 1 needs to pass that proposals 2, 3, and 4 need to be defeated. Um, I'm in favor of 5, but if it doesn't pass, we have other ways of holding our elected officials accountable. But my gosh, 2, 3, and 4 are so bad, and proposal 1 is so important, we need to make sure that those go the, the proper way. Um, that, that's my opinion on that issue, though. Any other questions? Dr. Ross. Well, the... Uh the issue of uh, economy, you know, the, the der derivation of the word economy really has to do with one household. Somehow along the way we got into thinking that when you talk about the economy, you're talking about the whole enchilada. And so I, I think focusing on the economy is about the individual household. And when you talk about business, if we want to grow the state, it's going to be small business. And small business is really dependent upon the individual family. So how does the individual family get the workability to launch a small business and, and get all of these people out of their way? So uh, I would think that's really got to be the, the focus, you know, you know, once we get past the election. What are we going to do to safeguard each individual family and to make it easier for small businesses to get launched and to have success? And I and I definitely agree with that. And that you know, there uh, I have very strong opinion on a lot of different things, and I'm open-minded to different solutions. But those are very important things. And you know, it's a real shame that uh, families have been broken up uh, by the uh, the economy being as bad as it is. You know, you have maybe a, a husband who's traveling, who, or who's commuting from the oil fields of North Dakota to try to provide for his family, or the grandparents whose whose grandchildren. Uh, have been moved out of state because their children couldn't support their family in the state of Michigan. And that, to me, is profoundly frustrating because we would do all of this work at the local level and the state and the federal government wouldn't have their act together. And this happened for between 2000 and really about a year ago at the state level that these problems were persisting and persisting and, and common to everybody in this room. I mean, we could say that there are really simple solutions that the legislature and the government could take, and they wouldn't do it. And we felt powerless. And that is the worst feeling, is knowing that there's a solution out there, the problem is not insurmountable, and yet all of these elected officials running around like, with chickens like their heads cut off. So, absolutely, absolutely, and absolutely <coughs> right. Uh, Jack. Martin, I want to come back to this. I, I probably bad ears didn't hear the answer. I think someone asked about 
Prop 6, which I think is the bridge thing. Mm -hmm. I heard you respond to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, but I didn't hear the response on 6. Well, my response is mm -hmm. I'm voting against Proposal 6. I believe there are unintended consequences. Okay, I heard that. And my concern is that it is... My, it, it, and I could go into great detail about that because I believe that there are many people in this room who are on different sides of that issue. And that, that, that's the proposal itself. I would just advise folks that are opposed to the bridge to make sure that they understand the ramifications of, of passing Proposal 6. And it may, a, you may actually get a lot more than you've bargained for. And my suggestion would be to actually lobby the governor and the legislature if you're opposed to that. I just want to bring up the fact that that proposal is worded in such a way that if you are against the current bridge, you vote yes, and if you are in favor of the current bridge project, you vote no. It's one of those kind of things, so you have to be careful. I would say proposal one is the same way, because I, I had to do a double take on that, because I, you know, I, I definitely want the emergency financial, emergency financial manager law to remain in place, and so proposals two through six are actually constitutional amendments. Proposal one is actually a referendum. So if you believe that the state should have greater oversight authority over failing communities to prevent them from failing, and you want to keep the emergency financial manager law in place, then you vote yes. And I am very much in favor of that. And I find it to be repugnant that um, the municipal labor unions have um, been so active in opposing that because at the end of the day we all need to make sacrifices for our communities to succeed just like we all had to make sacrifices to get Michigan at, at least get the bleeding stopped at the fiscal level in the state so proposal one if you believe that the emergency financial manager law should remain in place then you vote yes um, even though those that petition to get it on the ballot are opposed to the law it's um it's an interesting election we have and the ballot is jam-packed, and please don't, you know, when I was first um, voting, I think it was the second election I, I voted in, there, I didn't realize there was a back to the ballot, mm -hmm. and I knew there was a proposal on the ballot for a tax increase I wanted to vote against, but I thought I, I thought it was mistaken, and then I got back and realized when I was watching news that there was a back to the ballot, so, um, and, and make sure you pass it along to our new voters, um, or perhaps your, your, your children or your nephews or nieces that, you know, there's more, there's more than just the front of the ballot. Uh, and I think in the case of Detroit, they actually have two, two pieces of paper they vote on. Oh, oh. <laughs> any, any other questions? There was, Carl, did you have one? Yeah. Uh, in a facing delegate, I go to door to door and I talk about the, uh, I started off instead of who you vote for Obama or, or you know, Mitt, I started off, the, how do you like the way the county's being run? Is a you know a softer approach, and and the question I have maybe you know, we had our budget passed in May for the state this year. Is that a historic first? Do you know uh, where that is? And and are we in, in terms of the state? I think we're the first in this county in the state to be that many months ahead of time. Does it normally end of September or something like that? The the state's fiscal year begins on October first. Okay. And so, and then of course you, your municipal fiscal years like Troy starts on July 1st. Okay. As far as, I know it's been, if it's not the earliest that they got the budget figured out, it, it's the earliest by three decades. And, you know, the, uh, the fact of the matter is you had a, a man who was elected governor who was, a, who was a chief executive being elected to an executive position who had a goal and a vision for what Michigan could and should become and he set out achieving that. And, you know, I think a lot of the folks in the legislature, Republicans and Democrats, were kind of taken aback by the, 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 the pace. You know, we had the eight years of, of Granholm and even the last two of Angler where they were, you know, they had no idea what they wanted Michigan to be and how to fix the problems. And so I think that the legislature is, you know, you've, they got buy-in on the process now. But, I mean, it's a, I think it's a beautiful thing. I mean. We, we have been dealing with these deficits, you know, to the 11th hour, even to the, to the point where they shut down government that one time. And, um, you know, there are many other things. I mean, this is only one of many major issues that they had to tackle, and they got that out of the way, boom, and on to the next item. So I thought uh, it was beautiful. And it's interesting because most of what you see on the ballot for the six ballot proposals is to say yay or nay to what the governor and the Republican legislature have done 
in the last two years. It's effectively a referendum on some of the major policy um, items that have, have come out of Lansing. And I would say that, um, you know, there are certain things that can be tweaked, but I can assure you, I do not want to go back to 2009. That was horrific. And um, so we have a, uh, a, lot of, a lot of choices to make in next week, and let's make sure that we um, um, do it wisely and make sure that we educate those that we um, come in contact with, whether that be at work. And, you know, some people don't want to hear it, and that's fine. We can do it more diplomatically, and we can pick and choose perhaps who's receptive to it. But we cannot let um, misinformation get out there and, and allow people to run. I mean, people can make their own decisions, but we actually need to make sure that we contradict uh, bad information, especially when we are um, holding information that is, is the truth. So it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing we have in this country. That's, that's, uh, You're welcome. Good bill. Thank you. I will see what I can do. And uh, Jane and I will be continuing to make the rounds, and we've had lots of questions. And I want to once again thank everybody for coming out. Lots more pizza, lots more entertainment, and lots more water and Coke and Pepsi and all the good stuff. Right. That's such a wonderful turnout here. We'd like everyone to gather up in front here and uh